hi guys welcome again to my channel my name is Deborah. in this video i would like to show you how to you know get the time to excel clean them up analyze them prepare them for visualization so yeah i have a file that i would like to open which is unemployment rate in nigeria so i'll just double click and the file will open directly using my excel because that is already an excel file so here is the file and i got it from online and it's, it has a format that i would like to clear so what i would do is i'll use my control a or i will select the whole data all of it and go to my clear clear you can see my clear under your home tab the home tab i go to my clear let me show this record okay so click on the drop down arrow you see clear or clear format clear content so i want to clear format i just want every format that this data came with to be cleared or deleted so i'll just click on clear format and here is what i have the next thing i want to do is to you know add an extra row to that place to separate the heading with the page you had from the capture so this is basically trying to this is basically me trying to clean this data this data i have here is not really dead or inconsistent but at the end of this video i gave practical example to data cleaning do make sure to watch to the very end so after i've done this you know i would like to move this now to move want to move a selected so just select all of them and drag it the way i did so the next thing i would like to do i would like to center align this so i use my center align do the same for this center align you know you can now go ahead to add this data into a table so you can see my table tab is there and yeah my table has it i'll just click ok i'll do the same for this another way to add a table once you select any cell within the range just go to your insert tab you see on the tables there is a table there you can click on tables and you go to go you add your table you can come under your table design to you select your table style here yeah? I would like to do the same for this and first thing I don't like the arrangement of this so I'll just select all of them and paste it somewhere here. Yeah? Another thing I would like to do when you look at this data you find out that the quarter the quarter and the year they are not properly aligned so i will use what is called i'll delete this i'll use what is called transpose to you know change the arrangement of these transpose basically changes your is a kind of paste option that converts rows to columns and columns to rows so because of empty space i decided to just fill it up with a random number so for you to do what is your transpose you just need to count how many rows do we have in the cell you want to transpose or in the data you want to transpose we have one two three four five rows and we have how many columns one two three we have four columns here so what i would do is you do the inverse you're going to count four rows and five columns that is the inverse so i'm going to select four rows five column zero to five yeah so having that selected you type your equal to write transpose t r a n so excel will pop this up double click it and go to where the data i want to transpose and select so you select all of the data and you know this is an array if you want to if you want to like you don't just click enter you click ctrl shift enter and yeah i've transposed this data 
so i have my quarter here now i would like to change this quarter you know for this to reflect yay yay this is the quarter and i can't do that because this is already a transpose formula and it's not possible to you know change an array so look at what excel is saying you can't change part of an array and that is good so i'll just use my esc key on my keyboard to undo that the next thing i want to do is to copy and paste this as a value copy and paste it i'll just copy and come here under my paste i'll click on that drop down arrow and choose paste values so now i can edit this and excel will not query me so i'll just delete these ones they are no longer useful to me delete this and I'll move this. I'll move it up. Alright, so next thing I want to do is to center align. Then I'll add my table. And change my table color. So yeah, I have my tables now pardon me i would like to reduce the size of this table i don't want to analyze the data so i'll stop at 2016 so i'll delete anything below 2016 i'll do the same for this just come to the tip of the table and you see that i will you drag it up and it will take the rest of the data out of the table so yeah so i will okay i would like to change this to percentage like reduce the numbers of decimals it's what i did there two decimal places i'll do the same for the second column select all of it go to the norm under your home tab Put your number and you can see the percentage sign click on it and that is it i'll do the same for this too so yeah next thing i would like to do i think my data is looking clean next thing i would like to do is to you know create a create a pivot table or create pivot tables for this data so i'll just click on i'll be using once i click on pivot table i have my pivot table dashboard here so and you can see select a table range this is the table table one it is already selected next thing i'll do i'll do is check whether i need this pivot table to appear in a new worksheet or on this existing worksheet i would like to use existing worksheet because this is just uh, a practice file so location i'll choose location let's say row 11 and i'll click ok i'll click ok if i'm fine but you get what this third option here is choose whether you want to analyze multiple tables and yes i would like to analyze multiple tables but not with one pivot table but at the end of this class we see how this is important because we are going to be using slicers and i want the slicers to be connected to the three tables for more on pivot table watch my video on data analysis with pivot table so right there i have my pivot table it has appeared there and when when i choose any cell within the pivot table this pivot table fields will appear and this will tell me to show me the content i have in my table and i'll just drag drag the ones that are relevant to me into their respective field as you can see i dragged here to rows and you could see what i have here and i dragged unemployment rates to values you know anytime, anytime you have something like values numbers you know drag them into this value field so this is what i have here i will do the same for 
each of this table do the same for each of this table choose my location now I say add the model do for the next one Now, another thing I would like to do is to remove this ground total. They are not needed in your pivot table. It's not necessary. So go to your pivot table to under your design tab. You see off. You see this. So I will do the same for the second pivot table. Under my design tab, I'll go to my layout and I'll choose my ground totals and I'll turn it off. And I'll do the same for these two. So yeah, I think they are looking not bad. Next thing I'll do is I would love to, you know, sort this sort this data, but I don't think I need to sort this data because I love the way they are already arranged. But if we would love to sort the data, you can just, you know, select the column you want to and it's all in the column you want to sort and right click. So this mini toolbar will come up. And you under your sort, you can choose to sort A to Z, where you are sorting from smallest to largest, or Z to A, where you are sorting from largest to smallest. So I'll just choose maybe largest to smallest. So mm, yeah, so this is what I have here. I'll do the same for this. Right click and I'll sort largest to smallest. And yeah, that is it. I'll just do that for the just these two. Next thing I want to do is to create a chart, you know, pivot chart for this. So if I want to create a pivot chart, I'll select any cell within the pivot table and I'll go to my table, pivot table analyze under there, under your tools. I'm going to see pivot table chart. So you click on chart. This is another way you can still use um, a second way. I will show you in the next one. So I will choose a chart that is you know good with what I have. So I could the best chart that will fit this is either a column or a bar chart. So I will be using a bar chart. Let me use a bar chart for this. So I'll select my bar chart. I have my bar chart here. Let me drag it here. This is where I want it to be. I have my bar chart here. Let me reduce the size. Because everything I have to enter here. Now just clean up this chart, you know, remove this. This is not necessary. Select it and right click. You see, remove, hide field buttons on chart. Once you click on it, all the field buttons will be hidden. So I could delete this too. I don't think I need this, so I'll delete this too. And I'll name this table. I'll name it as some um, unemployment. So I've, na I've named this. Next, I'll remove this line. No? And I would like to make my you know bars very bold, so I will select that. And once I select that, this field will come out, and you go to your series option. Series option. We have your fill. We have your. We have this, and we have series option. So under my series option, you are going to see gap width. So once I reduce the gap width, the size of my bar will increase. Okay, let me leave it at fifty-seven. And I want to add data labels to this, so once I select this, I'll click on this 
plus icon and I'll go to data labels and then I'll find with the options outside end I would like to format this data label so I will just click on that and that's under my series option or label option I will go down to numbers and I will format this I don't like the way it's looking so I'll change it to percentage and um, I think I'm good I'm good with the way it's looking I'm fine I'm fine with it so yeah this is not looking good because of the way I sorted it so I would like to you know clear my sort so yeah I think it's looking way nicer way nicer like this so I'll do the same for this one too you know select any cell and this time around I'm going to go to my insert tab and go to recommended chart and I'm going to use a column chart for this I remove the field buttons to hide them delete this line so let's press the delete key and I'll reduce the gap width or basically you could just go straight into the box and you know edit the size you want so yeah, I changed the name of the chart. So the name will be employment rate. Okay, so I'll delete this. So yes, I'll do the same for the third table. So Select any cell within the pivot table, go to your recommend chart and we're going to be using this cluster chart. You know, notice something, Excel automatically selects the best chart that will suit your, you know, the content in your table. So I'll just click OK. And this is what I have. So I'll drag this to where I want it to be. Don't need this field, I need more space. Reduce the size. So I'll delete this few buttons. Delete this line just to keep my data clean. I'll add chart title. The title under employment with. So I want everything to enter then the sheet and I'm going to reduce them to be very small so the next thing I want to do in this data is to this is my axis this is my vertical axis I don't like the way it has given me points I would like to make it look you know more nicer look at this one you know so I'll just replicate that here so I'll just select this once I select that I right click and I'll bring forth this my format axis and I'd like to change this to maximum will be 22 
I think I'm okay with what I have here. Okay, what I have here. Now let's add data labels to this. So yeah, because this is unemployment rate and it is getting so high in 220, and I like to change the color of this bar too. So once I double click that single bar, I will right click or better still, I will just go to here and change the color to show that this is getting really high and it is not a good thing, you know. So we have employment rate, it's cool year, doesn't our system have um, best employment rate, so I will change the color to show the well. I think green, green means something good, right? So, so guys, I will, we will need to create a relationship between those tables and this is how I will do that. Remember initially that we have linked, we checked on data models when we are creating this pivot table, you know what I mean? When we are creating this pivot table, we checked data model. I hope you still remember what I mean. Let's say you want to create a pivot table. You go to your insert tab under a pivot table. We checked this box. So because we checked this box, I'll cancel this because I don't need it. Because we checked this box, this is the evidence that we checked it. When you select any cell within your pivot table that you have created, you go to your field list and you will see every other tables that are within that same sheet or other sheets that or that are connected to the table. Why this is the active? So why this is the active table? So having done this, we need to create a relationship within the tables for us to be able to connect those tables together or actually link them together we go to your relationship under your analyze tab under your analyze tab within your pivot table too so this is your relationship um dialog box you go to your new and you create your relationship so i will select remember i'm in my table this is my first table table one so i will say table one I'll choose here, which is the common color within the tables. Say OK. Now, the next thing I'll do is I'll go to the next, I'll close this, I'll go to the next sheet and create my pivot table, create my relationship, I mean. Remember, this is table two, so I'm choosing table two and table three. So now we have our table one linked to table two, and table two linked to table three, and that is okay. Now I cannot create a relationship here because you know why? If I create a relationship, if I choose um, to create a relationship within this pivot table, and I say connect table three to table two. I will have an error message. Let me show you what I mean. This is because table three is already connected to table two. So I will just close this and I will create my slicer. So here is my slicer. Now for us to choose a slicer, we are going to choose a slicer from we are going to choose a slicer from table three. You know why? Because table three, we didn't really create um, a relationship using this pivot table. So we're going to use the slicer from there. So 
here is the slicer i will right click it and do my report connection again select all the tables that i want the slicer to be connected to and once i click any date it automatically reflects so if i want to select multiple multiple um dates i'll just check this icon here so i'll deselect 16 and i will have 17 18 and the rest so this is how to create sliders and thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you do please give this video a thumbs up invite share it to your friends thank you so yeah this is it all right guys this is the last um video and this is where i promise to show you you know when you have large data you will find out that that data there is there will definitely be inconsistency as far as the raw data so i just put together this small data here to show you what i mean when you look at this set of data you find out that there are irregular space between before this um this first name there's a space here that is not needed and there's a space here too that is not needed there's a space here that is not needed and again they are empty cells they're empty cells so and another thing is those names here are in small letter so data cleaning is all about making your data look good consistent and you know good for analysis so what we are going to consider here is how to use the trim functions to remove um spaces you know use um how to delete empty cells deleting empty rows and how to find duplicate values there are duplicate values in this in this um data so we like we have higher there and we have higher below and another thing we're going to do cell formatting and proper case proper case means changes um the names to capital letter so let's get started the first thing i want to do is to delete empty empty space or empty cells within the sheet so i'll just use my ctrl a and i'll select all the sheet and i'll go to under my home tab you can see and my home tab i will go to the find and select option i'll click on that drop down arrow and i will go to my go to special so now my go to special my good special box dialog box will come out and i will choose blank so because um, i want to delete blank cells once i click ok excel have automatically selected the blank cells for me next thing i'll do is i'll go to my delete and click on that drop down arrow and i will choose delete cells so my delete box is out and i will have to choose between delete cells left delete cells up delete entire row that is what i will do i will delete the entire row because my analysis might not be needful if useful if io is empty io cell number is empty all the data that have empty cells i will have to delete them they are not necessary for my analysis so once i click ok those ones have been deleted the next thing i want to do is is to find duplicate within this so i'll select the entire sheet or entire data then i'll go to my data tab now my data tab i'll look for remove duplicate you can see remove duplicate is under data 2 once i click on remove duplicate excel will bring out this duplicate box for me and it will tell me to choose the the columns where i want to find duplicate and all these columns are already selected and that is fine by me i'll click ok so no duplicate was found but actually when you look at this we have joy row 5 and row 7 are the same and excel says no duplicate found you know why when you when i double clicked into this cell 
we found out that joy has space in between there's a space um after joy and the same when you come here within this there is no space so excel sees this as different values so what i will do is i'll remove the space that i have here and that is why maybe the first thing you do is to use your trim function but i have not used my trim function just to finish up with removing duplicate i'll remove that space then i'll go back and control a go to my remove duplicate and do that again now excel says one duplicate values found and remove three unique values remain and that's okay so now i have three values the next thing i'll do is proper case i have the first name and you know i have those names and they are in capital letters so i want to make them capital letter and i'll use proper function for that i want to do everything once what i'll do is i'll select I'll select the number of rows and columns I have here at the same time. So I have three rows and I have three columns. I'll just type my trim. Or I'll just type my trim. As I do that, I'll select everything together. So you have big data. You're going to be doing this one one. And use your control shift enter and everything comes up at the same time. So you could still use proper function to do the same. yourself so let me say I want to use proper function I will select this and I'll write my proper function okay so I'll select everything here and I'll do something should enter and here I have everything done at the same time